Thank you very much. My name's Tim. I'm the COO of uh, Project Seasway. And um, I see a new definition coming into play uh, between rich and poor. And that definition is those who've got access to the internet and those who haven't. Um, the simple way to test that is to think about what happens when you take access away from the rich and see what levels of panic you put them into and how quickly. Um, the bottom line is that the rich get access to all of these resources and the, and the poor are denied that. And what is it that's causing that gap? Well, maybe in the past it used to be the device. It used to be that the poor didn't have the devices to be able to get onto the internet. But that's changed recently in the last few years. And that's changed because the cost of your smartphone is consider considerably cheaper now. What's preventing that access is the cost of data, particularly in South Africa. Our cost of data is, is actually sort of four to five hours of internet usage is the cost of the device. Um, it's the cost of data that's preventing the people from getting online. And we've had demonstrations in South Africa, hashtag data must fall as a result of this, simply because of the cost of mobile data. And so our answer was free Wi-Fi. It's, and we put together a project with the Shwani municipality, um, and we built an infrastructure using municipality funds, using uh, municipality high sites. The beautiful thing, municipalities look after water. Water and wireless go together because they both need height. Um, we then had discounted bandwidths from suppliers. We used wireless ISPs to roll out the, the hotspots. And um, we have developed what we believe and what we've been told is the biggest free Wi-Fi network of its kind in Africa. We give each person 500 megabits of data a day free, and uh, they have it at a good speed. They have it at 15 mega megabits per second free. Just uh, incidentally, Shwani is basically Pretoria, if you recognize Pretoria from South Africa, and the surrounding townships around Pretoria. Now, what we found out was by that people have access to data, but it's expensive. So they use it incredibly sparingly. They use it for messaging. They use it for um, emergency purposes, really. Then what we found out is when we gave them 500 meg a day, um, it completely changed their behavior. It changed the way that they were accessing the internet. They were using it for homework. They were using it for research. They were using it in the way that we use the internet and assume that it's being used by those who've got access. But if your cost is really expensive, your um, method of using the internet changes quite considerably. So by giving them this amount of data, we, we liberated them to go wild on the internet. Um, the quote that I love the most from uh, talking to our users out there is this one. When uh, a lad said to me, um, when I'm on the internet, I don't live in a shack anymore. And that, for me, is real upliftment. Not upliftment in the future. It's upliftment right now for that individual in his vision of who he is now, in his projection of who he is to the rest of the world. And that is equality. That is equal rating for him, for the poor, equal to the rich. That is him being invited to the party of the rich, uh, but nobody knows that he actually got in free. And that, for me, is the beauty of the free Wi-Fi that we've been able to give to the people of Shuani. We've rolled out 1,000 Wi-Fi hotspots. That's the key figure. And then in terms of users accessing the network each month, we have 700,000 unique users coming onto our network each month, which is now getting considerable volumes that we've been able to achieve through the project. But we need to write the next chapter because the challenge that we've got is that things change. Governments change, which is what's happened with us. Um, budgets changed, which is again what's happened. And also, we've been frustrated that the speed of delivery hasn't happened as fast. The speed of the rollout to new projects 
hasn't happened as fast as we wanted it to, um, it, especially in the light of the success that uh, we've achieved. And so we need to come up with a self-sustaining and scalable model to be able to roll these networks out further. Also, to be able to link up with many other free Wi-Fi networks that we've seen around the country. And we've formed this alliance called, the, called AFRIFI, where we want to leverage off the other free Wi-Fi networks in South Africa and increase that scale of volume of users more and more to make it more interesting to the advertisers. And so AFRIFI has been born closing these two gaps. Well, you think, well, two gaps, I've only mentioned one. I've only mentioned the gap between the rich and the poor. What we've seen now is that as a result of the internet access is that these new communities are coming online and there's a gap between the rich, the businesses being able to reach this new market that were previously unreachable. And, and for that new market to understand the products and services that are available to them. Let me give you an example that we've got. In Mamelodi West, which is a, a township um, outside of Pretoria, um, there's a chap called Kamagotsi Masamola who's opened up a business of, of business support, of helping people with tax returns, VAT returns, um, HR issues. And he purposefully put his business right underneath one of our hotspots, our fizz boxes as we call them, free internet zones. He put his business right by the fizz box and so that he has started growing an economy. And we've got plenty of examples like this where these young entrepreneurs are emerging up, but they need to be connected back to the businesses that can give them more support and the businesses need to be connected to them. So we see a financial value in doing that, in getting that connection together. We're rolling these out wherever we can. Our goal is to get internet within walking distance of every citizen. What we've seen is that um, giving internet free doesn't necessarily mean for nothing. We've seen that um, we can change behavior, we can, we can um, encourage good behavior through internet rewards. So what we're looking at is, is making advertising, um, using um, games, putting in place mechanisms that allows people to earn their free Wi-Fi, that allows them to, for, for example, um, watch a video and ask, ask some questions, or answer some questions after it. That's incredibly powerful for the advertising medium because it actually means someone's watched their advert. Um, it's powerful for the end user because they get more, more data at the end of it. So we're, we're thinking and developing up more and more of these mechanisms of, of rewarding Wi-Fi for activity. And what we've realized by doing that, if you give it away free, it becomes an entitlement. Whereas if there's even the simplest way of just getting someone to do something, watch an ad, play a game, answer some questions, do a survey, then it's empowering them. They're earning that Wi-Fi, not with money, but with their effort. And by earning it and being empowered, they then value that Wi-Fi more. They're not abusing it and wasting it away. They're using it to empower themselves more. So it teaches them, it gets them into this cycle of empowerment. Interestingly, this morning with the, with the adverts, we, we feel that by having um, adverts on the Wi-Fi space, it provides such a more valuable medium for the advertisers as well. So when Alison was speaking about um, gender, I put a quick um, text through to Blake's, who are the uh, who are a key advertiser that's technical advertiser that's involved with us in this project, and we're hoping that they're going to be underwriting the first year, the next year of, of costs for us. And I said, well, what's the gender equality on our network? Answer came back, we've got 45% are women, 55% are men. I was able to get that answer within today. That's the power of the aggregated data that we've got, but also as well to protect the end user. We're passionate about anonymizing the data and aggregating it into groups and patterns that's valuable for the, for the advertiser and never to give away um, personal data.
Afrify is the next chapter for us. We see it as a new song coming up in the 80s. The song was um, Video Killed the Radio Star. We think there's a new song coming up, and that's for the advertising budgets. That's Wi-Fi Killed the Video Star. Um, we want to eat into the, advertise, the TV advertising budget and use that to promote free Wi-Fi for Africa. Businesses win, people win. It's a, a win, and the scale then would be to take this throughout South Africa and beyond. Thank you very much.